this is the um, Skokie River Corridor that runs on the west side of the Chicago Botanic Garden. We have prairie out there and we're trying to establish prairie out there and prairie as well as numbers of other natural communities in this area are fire dependent. What I mean by that is to have them persist and be healthy, they need regular fire to burn off the dead vegetation. That is one benefit of the fire and that clears the soil for seeds to germinate and to replenish the prairie plants. It also results in a very um, dark soil surface that that'll heat up early in the spring and promote germination out there. Um, other benefits certainly. Some invasive, invasive species are impacted by fire. You also have nutrient recycling happening with the fire. and. In this particular instance, um, I have a large vole problem, meadow voles, that are not native to this system, but um, they are eating our native grasses, our prairie grasses, and I've been able to get the prairie grasses growing quite well, and in order, in order to reduce the winter habitat for them, they burrow uh, in that litter layer there, um, I'm burning it off and hopefully that'll reduce their herbivory. They eat it and they actually eat it down to the crown so that the grasses die and provide the opportunity for invasive species to survive. And of course, you know, a prairie is a grassland so you need your native grasses to be able to establish it. The, the plants I was most concerned about in terms of the grasses were big blue stem and Indian grass. And of course, there are forbs that are establishing this. This whole area, it's kind of mixed. Some have been, I've been working on since the mid 90s, and others have just are about four or five years old. We do control the burn. Um, we do a lot of preparation with respect to it, and we require certain weather conditions. For example, there is a highway, the Edens Expressway right by it and so we make sure that we have winds so that the smoke is blown away from the highway. We needed southwest winds that day. Uh, we also make sure we have a good relative humidity, a lower relative humidity because then it's the um, vegetation won't generate as much smoke in that scenario. Um, when you have a lot of moisture in your vegetation you get a lot more smoke. We also uh, prepare burn breaks and what burn breaks are, they're an area adjacent to where the fire will go um, that will prevent the fire from going into a contiguous area. So we mow those where it, and, and we rake that off then. And in areas where um, we think it still could creep because you still have some fuel there, we water it down and in um, their, their gentlemen that had backpack sprayers on that were watering down that fuel break during the course of the fire and then that stops the fire. We have a water wagon out there with probably about 400 gallons of water if we needed to quickly put it out. And, and the only reason to do that would be um, if the winds shifted, for example, and that can happen along the lake, but we didn't foresee that happening today where we're going to have a, a, a wind reversal and get eastern winds, for example. Um, particularly in this region, we're in the tall grass prairie region, and um, we're at the edge of it here in the Chicago area. And if these communities are prairie communities, if they didn't burn, they'd really turn into woodlands because we're at, also at the edge of the eastern deciduous forest communities. And certainly burns happen naturally, but burns were also set by the indigenous people here.